Hey, welcome back. So we're carrying on with our Gauss Law series and for this one we're going to be doing some Voss spherical bodies. So we're going to be doing three in this. We're going to be doing a point charge, we're going to be doing a conducting solid sphere and a non-conducting solid sphere. The non-conducting solid sphere will be last and we're going to do the point charge first. So the point charge and the conducting solid sphere are going to be very similar and we're going to use one of them to solve the other one quite quickly. So we'll do what we did in all of our previous videos and we're going to draw a Gaussian surface. So for this one our Gaussian surface is just going to be a sphere with some distance here which is going to be R coming from our point charge. And then we'll do what we've done before and we're going to use our integral. And first we can say right our Q enclosed which is equal to our integral it's just Q. For this one, all of the charge which exists is enclosed. So all of our charge is enclosed and this is all over epsilon naught. And this is equal to our integral. And we have our E dot dA. Again, just assume vectors on whenever I use a dot product we won't be drawing them on. And we know as well now that we have our cosine of theta. In this case, our theta at all points is zero, so our cosine of zero is equal to one. So we can remove our dot products and our vectors and take our E outside like we do normally, and we're left with E and our integral of dA, and an integral of just dA is going to be A. So that's just E A. Now what is A? So A, we just need to take, and that's our area of our sphere, and now from geometry, we know that A is equal to four pi r squared, where r is whichever radius we've picked. So we can now take this back, and we say that our Q over epsilon naught is equal to e 4 pi r squared and I hope a few of you have seen what's about to happen here now as you should recognize this we rearrange all of this for e and we have e equals q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared and using what we have here for our constant we can say k sub e q of r squared. And hopefully all of you should recognise that because that is the electric field for a point charge which you will learn when you start doing electricity and magnetism. And that's how we get to that uh, value for the electric field for our point charge. So that's very straightforward from our last videos. Um, if you think I was a little bit rushed, have a look at the previous videos and you should get that straight away. And now we're going to have a look at our solid sphere. Now we're going to take some distance from the centre, do it in a different colour, and we'll say this is our central point here, and we're going to call this distance here A. So our distance A. And we're going to do two Gaussian surfaces. So we're going to do our first Gaussian surface is going to be inside. It's going to be inside our sphere. And then our second Gaussian surface is going to be outside of our sphere. And in each case, the distance is going to be r. But of course, we're going to be altering the value of r. First for the small distance, then r is just going to keep on expanding from the centre till it gets to be equal to a, and then just keep on expanding until it gets to whatever value you want r to go to. So for the first example, we're taking it to be a conducting sphere. Now hopefully you should all know by now, in from your lectures in electricity and magnetism, that inside that conducting sphere, the way everything gets arranged, we can't have an electric field inside a conducting sphere there. So up till the point R is equal to A, we have no electric field. So for all 
of the Gaussian surfaces we take until we get past A is equal to zero. And then if we were to take a Gaussian surface outside, we can see that that is exactly the same as the point charge. Which means that if we were to graph both of these two, you'll find that with our point charge, we have a 1 over r squared dependence coming down like normal and for this one we just draw to the point at which we get to A, this is A here, this R and E and R and E. And obviously I didn't go through the math for this one because it's very straightforward what actually happens it. But now we're going to go on to the much harder version of this which is the non-conducting solid sphere. Just leave that there. So now we're going to take exactly the same thing again. We're going to have, let's draw this out quickly. We've got a sphere, we've got some point here, we've got some distance A, and again we'll be taking a Gaussian surface first inside and then we're taking a Gaussian surface outside. Now notice that when we get outside this is going to be the same as a point charge, the same as our conducting sphere, but it's inside where we've got an issue. So we're going to have to go through a few things first. So we're going to do our Q enclosed and we're going to do our integral. So the integral side is going to be exactly the same for our area. Our integral of EDA, we're going to get the exact same E4 pi R squared. We know that from the last two examples, we don't need to go through that again. That's just how we get it, it's just the surface of a sphere. We cosine and everything like that. But then for our Q enclosed, Remember this is inside the sphere at the moment, over epsilon naught. We have a bit of a problem because inside our Gaussian surface we have a percentage of the Q enclosed at each point. So it depends on the radius of our Gaussian surface at how much charge is actually enclosed. And what we have to do is we have to take the overall charge, which we're going to note as big Q, and put that over epsilon naught, and then this is all by and now we have our 4 thirds pi r cubed. This is all over 4 thirds pi a cubed. And that's our Q enclosed. Now that's looking quite complicated already. So what we're going to go and do is we're going to simplify all this a little bit. So we can get rid of that, we can get rid of that, that and that. So now if we say we've got our E, which is equal, and we're going to put our Q, R cubed, over. And now we have our 4 pi R squared moved to the bottom. And now we have our A cubed here. And of course that means we can get rid of our r squared and we can get rid of our power completely up here. So we're left with our electric field inside is Q over 4 pi A cubed and R on the top there. Oh, we're not forgetting as well, sorry, R epsilon naught on each of these as well. And now we have our 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, so we can put this as K E Q R over A cubed. That's quite a few steps to get to that point. And then when we get outside, we're going to have exactly the same as we did last time, the same as a point charge and everything else. So 
I'm going to go ahead and graph this and then we're going to discuss what happens. It makes it very, very clear when you start to look at it on a graph. So this is our graph here. And what we're actually going to have is we're going to have a line going up like this. And this is going up to the point A. Well, this is R and this is E along here. And then from this point, we're going to have the normal point charge decay like that. Where this is going to be just the normal You see, when we get to this point here, when we get here, we find that R and A are equal. So if we just make A now equal to R, at this point we have K E Q R over now A is equal to R R cubed. So we take off the R at the top, knock down this power by one to make that R squared. And we have the exact same there and there. And that's what happens. Our electric field increases as we enclose more and more and more charge as we're going up. And we get to a point where R is equal to A. And then we regain our original equation for a point charge at that exact point. And then we get our 1 over R squared to K, which you always find. And that's how to find the electric field for a point charge, a solid conducting sphere, and a solid non-conducting sphere. So if you want to go back and you want to check out, we had um, an infinite surface, and next we're going to be doing a few more spherical bodies. We go into a spherical shell next. Um, and if you just want to see more from my channel, just go ahead and click there as well.